I know this has happened to you at some point in your life. You're sitting in a room, whether it be at home or at work, and you're like, the Wi-Fi here is terrible. Because I just want to show you how to use a tool like NetSpot to figure out what the problem is and what you can do to fix it. The problem is the Wi-Fi in this room is brutally slow. So take a look at the laptop. What I've done is I've, I've set a, uh, a little constant ping going on, which, which honestly right now looks great. It normally isn't that great. But I'm going to open up NetSpot. When people open a tool like this, they will often look at it and go, oh, okay, so now what? The networks that I have at this house are C Home, that's Chara Home, uh, and CIOT, that's Internet of Things. Now you can see there's some other networks popping up here. I'm guessing those are my neighbors uh, that are that are sending a signal over. So first thing that you want to look at is go, okay, well, what network am I using? If you look in the upper uh, corner right here, I can see uh, on, on this is on an Apple laptop, right? I can see I'm connected to C Home, but I mean, what frequency am I using? There's really three frequencies right now that are in action. You've got 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz, and six gigahertz, right? The, the higher frequencies give you more bandwidth and less interference, right? Because there's more frequency available up there, but less range, which actually works out better overall. As I'm looking right here, I'm like, I how do I know which frequency I'm using? Well, on a Mac, it's kind of handy. You can actually, on, on your uh, keyboard, hold down the option key and click that little Wi-Fi signal. And look at that. I can immediately see, ah, I'm using down here the five gigahertz frequency. It's channel 161, right? So I can go, okay, great. Now I know what I'm on. And I'm looking right here and I'm seeing the signals that are green are all in the 2.4 space. Okay, seems like we get a decent signal uh, using 2.4. I'll talk about the strengths in just a minute, but I'm not using that. Why? Network cards play a big role in this, right? Apple manufactured this laptop. They wrote the drivers for their network cards. They're the ones that tell this laptop when to join five, when to join six, when to join 2.4, right? They dictate it. So we may have a glorious uh, network signal, but our laptop, in, in, in my case, you can see is choosing not to use it. It's going for the five gigahertz, which is down here. So, okay, now fr freeze for a minute. Can I force that? Can I fix it? Not easily. A lot of times, like if you're using an Apple laptop, it's just like, hey, look, I pick that for you. So you can't really choose what you're using. But now, now as I'm looking here, notice that everything's kind of, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. I'm seeing some, some green network show up and it looks like I'm getting like direct TV or something like that. Let's look at the signal strengths. What, what does this mean as I'm looking down this? Signal strength, the closer you are to zero, the better. It's always going to be a negative number. We want to be closer to zero because that indicates stronger signal. So realistically, what am I getting? Well, if you've got like between a 30, a ne I should say a negative 30 and a negative 50, you're golden, right? That's a phen phenomenal signal. Um, if you're like negative 30, I mean, you're standing on the moon on top of a wireless access point. Like that just doesn't happen. You might see some, some 30s if you're right next to a, a wireless access point. But normally, you're probably going to see things closer to eh, negative 40, negative 50. Eh, it's pretty good, right? 60, negative 60 and beyond, you're, I mean, you're starting to fight it. And if you, if you look right here in this room, I've got some up here, but these aren't even my networks, right? If they are going to show up in the good, they're going to be at that 2.4 band, right? Which I'm not even using right now. And that one's good. But when I move down to the five gigahertz, I notice that I'm already dropping down to this, this negative space. If you take a look at the top of this, if I click this little uh, signal strength and noise, initially, this is just a mess, right? You're not going to want to even look at this, but it, it's showing like, here's the signal from the wireless network that you're using. Look in the upper left though. This allows you to filter it down based on the frequency. So if I just want to see five gigahertz, which is what I'm looking at now, look at this. What I'm seeing here is I'm seeing all the networks stacked on top of each other. I'm seeing that I've got multiple networks multiple access points. Because if you look over here on the left-hand side, you can tell what access point it is because it's gonna have, I'll say, a similar MAC address, right? When it comes to wireless channels, the wireless access point should pick one that is not being used, right? It, it should, as it boots up, uh, be like, oh, it looks like somebody else is using 161. I won't use that one, but in this case, it looks like, now just, just from a cursory glance using this, it looks like it's like, no, I'm, I'm going to share that. I've got an only one 6 gigahertz uh, wireless access point. It's actually sitting in the other room behind my television, right? Seven wireless access points, but only one has 6 gigahertz. Okay, there's another problem. Now, I'm, I'm getting all this literally from just opening NetSpot and going, okay, what do I see here? The 6 gigahertz, if I, if I put a filter, let's put a filter on it. Filter, I'm going to go to the band, I'm going to go to 6 gigahertz, 
and boom, it's filtered it down. There we go. Um, notice this gem is sitting here at a signal strength currently of negative 72 with an average of negative 77. That's a junk signal. But the challenge is, if you combine that with the drivers of this, this um, uh, Apple, right? Apple's like, oh, latest and greatest, we like that. You're gonna go to six gigahertz. That's one of the reasons that I start seeing my signal drop is it might get a good six gigahertz signal for a few seconds. It's like, we're going that way. Boom, I'm over there. My performance immediately degrades because that, that signal, very great signal, but very short range on that. And I'm nowhere close to, well, I'm, I'm in the general vicinity, but that television is blocking most of that six gigahertz. So what action do you take here? Turn off six gigahertz. I should, like, as, I, as I'm looking at this data from NetSpot, I should immediately be like, I'm logging into Ubiquiti's controller for this, and I'm turning off the six gigahertz signal until I can get more access points that use that, because my little Apple device here is always gonna prefer that, and it's gonna get a crummy signal when, I, when I'm starting to move outside the range of that one little access point, which I move around all the time. What I take away from this is one, um, I'm in a room where I'm not getting a good signal when it comes to the five gigahertz. I mean, six gigahertz isn't even showing up. It's, I mean, it's probably somewhere way down in the list, right? Six gear, I mean, it's just, it's a crummy signal. I've got a good 2.4 signal, but my Apple laptop's never gonna use that thing. It matters what kind of devices you buy. I see that I'm getting 2.4 be because of my driver. I'm not, I'm not gonna use it. Five gigahertz is crummy. I would probably say I need to locate a wireless access point in here, run a cable or use a, um, what, a wireless mesh kind of thing to repeat the signal, but there's a price to pay for that. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that in a, in a future video. These are little older WAPs that don't auto inspect and change based on what it's seeing on the spectrum, right? Some of the newer Ubiquiti WAPs along with Meraki WAPs and everything else will actually scan the spectrum. They've got a dedicated ra radio to scan what's going on. And at a certain time of day, it'll change channels to find a cleaner one, right? In this case, my guess is the system rebooted. It's all using auto channel and two apps ended up choosing the same five gigahertz channel. So I've got a whole bunch of things overlapping on this thing that I need to go and separate those channels because two wireless access points sharing the chain, same channel is it's like people talking over each other on the telephone call. Now, if you wanna get methodical about it, you can go in the upper right corner of NetSpot and you can actually choose a filter and say, well, show me the things that are using channel, let's just drop down to 161, right? And immediately it goes shoop and, and filters it down and I can see right there, these are the MAC addresses of the two WAPs that are ending up sharing the same channel. It seems like they're a little further apart from each other, you can see the signal strength, but they're still gonna interfere with you, they can, they can hear each other. So I need to go into the Ubiquiti controller and that's where I'll be able to see the, the MAC address of these WAPs and I'll, I've got plenty of channels in the five gigahertz space, right? I'm gonna separate these things as far as the east is from the west, right? Okay, last but not least, and I, I know I keep saying that, but I know some of you are gonna download NetSpot and play around with it. Go to the settings and make sure your Wi-Fi scanning interval is set to once every 10 seconds, right? You probably have noticed that on the screen, these wireless networks update and they go, shoop, that's, that's why. If, it, if you set it, you know, 30 or a minute, you may save your battery on your laptop, but at the same time, you're just gonna be sitting there waiting to get those, those frequency updates, right? Next step I would take with this, as well as I'm looking at the top of this, it also supports a survey mode where I can do a wireless survey and walk around with the floor plan of my house. That would be an interesting, to try, an interesting thing to try next. But for now, I hope at least the inspector part of this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.